This four column model beam engine is based on a design by the very famous model engineer with the nom de plume of Tubal Kane. I'm going to make a start on the uh, four column beam engine by cleaning up the flywheel casting a little and to check that I can actually get it to fit on the ML7 to do uh, to turn it as I suspected and hoped in fact this flywheel just over nine plus inches in diameter will easily fit in the gap of the ML7 the Myford is such a versatile lathe it is absolutely splendid I have had numerous attempts at setting this flywheel up on the faceplate all with limited success but this is the final and I hope last time I don't think I've videoed all of it, but this is about the final sort of facing machining of this uh, flywheel. I've managed to uh, machine the face, corrected a bit of a wobble on the inner face, which needs to run relatively true. A bit cosmetic, but roughly profiled the outer rim. Don't really think it matters much what that looks like. And with some difficulty using the same setup, a few rags which will get cleaned off when I take it off the uh, faceplate, but I actually machined the other face of the flywheel as well. So hopefully uh, the two sides are parallel and won't show a wobble. That is the plan. The next step, I think I'll remove this boss, which doesn't really have any function and uh, bore and ream the uh, center of the flywheel seven, seven oh, I can't remember actually what seven sixteenths I think it is and cut the um, the slot for the keyway while it's all at this same setup that way hopefully everything is sort of roughly where it wants to be 
before taking the flywheel off the faceplate and I'll probably mount it on a moundrel at that stage with the keyway to do any little bits of further machining that need to be done the other side. That's the plan anyway. This is rather gash homemade keyway cutting uh, tool. Just ground up from a bit of broken uh, twist wheel, I think, to be honest. Uh, approximately a, an eighth wide. Slow and steady. Done it before, seems to work alright, especially in brass or bronze, whatever this is. It's not Rolls-Royce standards, but frankly, for me, for a steam engine, that'll do. I've also managed to turn a little bit of a taper on the boss, because the casting in this area was tapered, so I've kind of followed that direction. A rather gash set up showing the small rotary table set up to machine off the bosses on the spokes. I must admit that work could have been done simply by filing. A picture of the crankshaft machined to final dimensions with the keyway cut in it. Unfortunately I didn't video its uh, manufacture. Setting up on the large rotary table to machine the profile of the crank web. Hoping that this uh, crank arm is finished. Hoping. 
loads of twiddling of dials on the rotary table, the cross feed, or the long travel feed, and the cross feed of the mill. Sadly, I have to admit, not always in the right direction. Easy for me to get confused. Anyway, I think I'll take it off now and see what it looks like. Well, it's very, very far from perfect. And certainly wouldn't win any prizes. But I give up. That is the crank arm for the crankshaft. I think you have to think, I can't do any better than that because of my lack of competence and just stop and that's what I'm doing.